Yes, it's been a month since I posted my last video. I am well aware of that fact. <sighs> Now this is kind of a spur of the moment kind of artwork that I made after I failed at the first step of a new project that I was working on and we had this ongoing art contest on our discord server called the ready set blend challenge and the theme for this time was fear. I took this opportunity to just take a break have some fun and I challenged myself to come up with a finished scene along with the other awesome contestants and so today in this video I'll be breaking down exactly how I made the scene from start to finish so that you can recreate it as well or at least get an idea about how to make something like this. Now without wasting any more of your time, let's get into the video. Starting off, I needed an idea. I initially thought about going for a common phobia like acrophobia, the fear of heights, or entomophobia, which is the fear of insects. But as I watched some YouTube videos about some of the more uncommon ones, I discovered that there exists a fear of reflections called catoptrophobia. Now that already seemed like a pretty interesting topic to me, so I was about 90% sure that I was going to use this one. I somehow got the random thought of some horror movies that I watched a long time ago, where these ghosts pop up in the mirror. Actually, now that I think about it, a lot of uh, uh, modern horror movies also do that but yeah from there i thought about creating a scene with the character in front of a mirror whose reflection won't be the same as his pose i guess it is a cliche horror plot choice but still pretty creepy in my opinion to start off let's create the base of the bathroom i'm just taking a cube here and scaling it to roughly match the proportions of the room i had in mind i'm not trying to make it too spacious so that it hopefully creates more tension in the final render as i have no idea what it's gonna end up looking like we'll be tweaking some stuff later down the line as we get a better sense of scale now that led me to work on the character next i'm using an add-on called human generator which lets you create these super high quality human models by simply tweaking some sliders around i'm just going for some decent proportions but keeping him very simple overall with no hair and no clothes. This means that you can download any free alternate human model to create something like this yourself as it doesn't have anything fancy going on. I place this character immediately inside the room so that we can make sure that the scale of everything matches in comparison. Next I added the mirror. It's simply a plane with a little bit of an inset to create the bezel. I downloaded this free sync model from BlendSwap, opened it up in Blender, selected the stuff I wanted, copied them by hitting Ctrl C and then pasted everything in my scene by pressing Ctrl V. In the same way, I also added the toilet, a toilet roll, and a bathtub. This required me to change up the proportions of the room a bit to fit everything. These tweaks are part of every workflow, so every time you create a new scene, just let loose and try whatever comes to your mind, and most of the time, it'll be better than what you started off with. If you think that it is a risky change, you can always save a new version of the project and then do the changes. That way, even if you mess up, you can always go back to the older version and have everything safe. Now I created a window on the left by using an add-on called Archimesh. You can access this by going to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Archimesh. If you hit N to bring up this panel, you can access the Archimesh add-on in the Create tab. And the same way, you can also add the door. Now a little spoiler, most of this stuff isn't even visible in the final render anyway, so you can save your time by not adding them. It was time to pose the character next, so I used the Rigify rig that was automatically set up in the add-on to pose it. I wanted the character to cover his eyes with his hands so as to make it look like he was afraid of looking into the mirror. After I got a pose that I liked, I finally added the camera and started planning the shot. I downloaded some more models to add some more detail to the scene, like this towel hanger on the right of the frame, and then created these simple shelves using cubes on the left of the frame right above the toilet and put some accessories on them. I also put some accessories on the sink itself just to add some finer detail. The next step was to add the materials for everything. I downloaded all of the textures for free from CC0 Textures which they apparently changed the name to ambientcg.com. But anyway, I downloaded the wall tiles, the ceramic, plastic and metal textures and set up the materials accordingly. Now I wanted to get into the lighting next because I didn't know exactly how I'd go about lighting this scene. So I experimented a bit starting off with a lighting above the mirror as a key light to get the dramatic look. I knew the scene needed to be considerably dark in order to get that horror look, but just having one light source would be a bit boring. I also played around more with the composition and ended up having the camera super close to the subject like this. I think this shot looks way more intense and immersive than what we had earlier. In order to have some definition in the background and make it slightly visible, I decided to add an area light coming from the back as if the door was slightly open. I pointed it towards the shelves which probably were the only background elements visible in the mirror. Now comes a very important part of the process, working on the reflection. So how did I get a different reflection in the mirror than the character? Let's take a look. 
I first duplicated the character model and rig, cleared his pose and changed it to something a bit more angrier and stiffer looking. I only looked at how the reflection was looking and not the character itself as he wasn't going to be directly visible to the camera. If you select the meshes of the character and go to the object settings, you can uncheck camera under ray visibility and this will make the object invisible to the camera while still keeping his shadows and the reflections the same. That is all of his direct lighting has been turned off and only the indirect lighting is turned on. We'll be making use of this later to create the final render. At this point, I got a really cool idea actually inspired by my friend Technical who is also a participant in this contest. The idea was to crack the mirror in a way which looked like he punched the mirror to get rid of his reflection. So in order to really sell this effect, we need to actually break the mesh into pieces instead of just using textures. In order to do that, I used the cell fracture add-on that comes with Blender. The greatest thing about this add-on which I discovered only while working on this project is that you can use annotations in Blender to draw exactly where you want the mesh to break from and then specify it in the menu that pops up when you go to object, quick effects. Oh, what is, what is this button? Let me get it out of the way. Cell fracture. There we go. These are the settings that I use for my mirror after much experimentation. So make sure you try different settings to see what works best for you. Once that was done, I created the material for the mirror. It was pretty simple, just a glass and a glossy shader mixed together with a mix shader node. And the factor was controlled using the Fresnel output of a layer weight node. This basically means that the edges of the mirror will use the glossy shader more than the glass shader and it'll look shinier, which I thought looked pretty cool. I think this is all that I did for the the scene building part. After all of that, I set up the render layers, one that only contains the character with the mirror and the scene set to indirect lighting only. And then we have one that contains only the mirror with the other character's reflection. So the character's camera visibility is turned off like I mentioned before and the scene collection is set to indirect lighting only. Lastly, we have the scene render layer which contains everything but the mirror and character. So the mirror and character collections are set to indirect only. Now if all of this makes no sense to you, then I suggest that you watch my video on how to render huge scenes in Blender for free. That video goes over how to use render layers in the first method and that should give you a good basic understanding of how you can start applying render layers in your own projects. Finally, we're ready to render out the render layers. If you're using Blender 2.93, make sure you turn on persistent data in the render settings because it will significantly decrease the build time while you're rendering the second and third render layers because all of the data will be kept in the memory. Also, to always try to use a file format like openexr or .tiff instead of .png to get a higher dynamic range to play around with in the post-processing stage. Now, once everything is rendered out, we can composite everything into one image by using a photo editing software like Photoshop, or you can also do it right inside of Blender's own compositor. But I won't be covering that in this video. But in a nutshell, what I did was I used the scene render layer as the base and then put the mirror on top of that and then put the character render layer on top of both of them. Then I started to do some color correction and grading going for that greenish tint in the shadows to give off that unsettling vibe. I also did some chromatic aberration in the reflection and around the corners of the image which is that RGB split effect. I also added some blood to the cracked part of the mirror and also added some cuts and blood to the knuckles of the character to make the story a bit clearer. Then I added some more lighting in certain parts, mostly some rim lighting to the character, towel and these accessories, though you probably can't see the screen properly because of the compression. And after all of that, this is what the final result looks like. So I hope you guys like what you saw and that you found it helpful or at least entertaining. If you want to participate in this art challenge, be sure to join our Discord server as soon as possible because there might be an ongoing challenge right now. The idea of this challenge is that we have five two week long challenges consisting of an emotion based challenge, a general themed a color palette based challenge followed by another general theme challenge and then we ended with a challenge to recreate still image or an animation from an anime, movie or game. The cool thing about this contest series is, is that you can participate with any medium that you want. For example, you could do traditional drawing, digital 2D art, 3D art, VFX, clay sculptures, etc. Or just basically whatever you want to use to portray your ideas. The whole point of this recurring art contest is not about competing but about challenging yourself, pushing yourself to the limits and hopefully learning something new. 
new. And for those of you who are in it for the prizes, we'll be hosting a mega contest after each series, that is after each of the five challenges have ended. Now the mega challenge is obviously going to be a bit more constrained in terms of the medium used, but hopefully the prizes will make it worthwhile. Now that's basically all I had to share in this video. If you guys have any suggestions or questions, make sure you leave a comment down below. I read every single one of them. Now thanks for making it till the end. You're a real Chad. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.